The Grow My Cleaning Company podcast helps owners of cleaning companies just like you to grow your company and yourself so you can make more money and finally get the time and money freedom that probably got you into this business. Discover how to automate and create systems that allow you to grow like crazy without losing control. If you dig the show and want to show some love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. It really helps. Enjoy the show. Hey, Clean Nation, Mike Campion here with the lovely Shantice Marie Myers. This amazing young woman started Myers Clean Clubbing. I don't know what clubbing is, but there we go. August uh, 2021, Detroit, Michigan. We're recording this January 2022, so like not even a year. Um, serves residential clients. Um, we, it's funny, we, we talked a little before the call. Her biggest question was that she wanted to help with, what's the hardest part about running your cleaning business? And I was like, that's a terrible question. I think no one would be interested. So uh, we decided I will answer it in 10 seconds. No one will care. And then we'll just coach uh, 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 Shantice Marie. I was thinking Marie Shantice. Anyway, Shantice Marie live best I can. And you guys can kind of come along for the journey because I don't think we, we typically do that. It might be fun for you guys just to hear um, how that works and see how the conversation goes. That said, um, to answer your question, the hardest part about running your business really depends on the phase. Um, when you're just starting, it can absolutely be um, it's going to be getting clients, right? Um, when you start getting clients and you're cleaning, get out of cleaning can be the hardest part. When you're out of cleaning completely, it's probably creating systems and processes that allow you to go. But the one thing that stays the same or consistent through all of those phases is you. So almost always the hardest thing and most rewarding thing, believe it or not, about, about running your business is maintaining your, your kind of mental power and command over your own universe. So I would say globally, the and crazy what's that go ahead and disciplined too. yeah just the beliefs and stories we tell ourselves can either be super helpful or devastatingly unhelpful <laughs> so choosing stories that help uh is i would say one of the hardest things you know and it's funny so anyway there's a good quick answer that said um i started to coach her offline i'm like wait this would be a great conversation for the world to have so i stopped i don't know anything about um this young lady's business so we're just going to do it live so tell me what's going on in your business what's the biggest stress that you've got right now so right now i am currently working for this real estate company and what i do i go do like move in and move out cleans for like new tenants for like who are moving in or moving out um i feel like it's pretty hard now because i i get about five to seven houses throughout the week and i don't really have a team now so i have to you know make time to go to each house and it's only me cleaning so that's very time consuming because they need these houses cleaned you know by a certain date for new tenants to move in so that has been you know very frustrating to me because I need help. <laughs> I love that. As bad as the first question was, this is as good as a second discussion. I'm really excited to have this discussion, um, Shantice. So, man, you, you, there's like three things packed in there that are super common at your stage. And I promise we're going to help you. And there's going to be hundreds, if not thousands or tens of thousands of people out there in the same boat that hopefully we can kind of bring along. So, the two big mistakes I'm hearing that are really going to slow you down and will cost you months, if not years or decades, depending on how stubborn you are and growth of your company is one, well, they're both the same thing, lack of clarity in what you want. So we'll talk about that. And the two pieces of that are the customers you're going to serve and who's going to be doing the cleaning. So, so many people get into the cleaning business, assuming they want a cleaning business. Like if you ask them, do you want a cleaning job? Do you want to clean toilets or do you want to have a cleaning business? They say, I want to have a clean business. I do not want to clean toilets. Um, and then you go, great. What do you do all day? And they go, I clean toilets. So <laughs> um, is it, I don't want to assume, Shanti, so you're one of the few that like, I don't want a business. I want to clean all day, every day for money. I don't want to hire employees. I don't want to have systems and processes. I just want to clean. Or are you like, no, I want to take a business not to clean all day. I want a business. Okay. So for Shanti and for everybody out there in the early stage, you've got to start with, I want a business. Um, so many people say it breaks my heart, ridiculous things. Sorry, people. I'm not trying to make you feel bad. Like, well, you know, I certainly want a business, but if I have to clean for the first, like, you know, four or five years, I get it. That is insane. That's like saying I'll take a job at Walmart for five years and then hopefully I'll own a Walmart. Like that, that's, that doesn't make one has nothing to do with another. 
and you don't have to clean at all. So I, for everybody, including my friend Shanti's, first and foremost, we got to get crystal clear on what we want and not deviate from that because someone waves money in front of our face, right? So we're like, we want a cleaning business, but if someone waves money in front of our face to clean a toilet today, I'll take it, right? That's, that's, we got to get away from that. So first and foremost, you've got to be clear. I want a cleaning business, not a cleaning job. And might you or anyone else starting have to clean for two or three weeks? I shouldn't say have to. Might choose to clean for two or three weeks? Sure. Might you even in a crazy extreme circumstance choose to clean for two or three months? Sure. Fine. If you want a cleaning business and 91 days has passed and you're still cleaning, you're doing it wrong, right? So we, and I'm not picking on you. We have so many people that are five, 10, 20, 30, 50 years in, they started wanting a cleaning business and they wake up years or decades later, they're just cleaning toilets. And they're like, I don't know what happened. What happened is you want to start building building, but you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have plans, architectural plans for building and architectural plans for a, a trash can and you built a trash can. <laughs> like what's going on? So first and foremost, we got to be crystal clear. I'm not doing a cleaning job. I'm going to have a cleaning business. And believe it or not, I feel so strongly about this, but, but I need the money, Mike. I need the money. Fine. Get a job cleaning for somebody else and then build your own cleaning business while you do that. And people are like, no, I make way more money. You don't, I promise you. Because you're like, well, I, I charge, you know, 200 bucks for a cleaning and it only takes me all day. So, you know, eight hours, 200 bucks is 20 bucks an hour, whatever. Yeah, but you had to go get the job and, and bill it and invoice it and get the supplies and all that. That's what you're getting paid over the cleaning for. The cleaning part, you're just getting paid whatever you would, whatever you're saving paying a cleaner. So just freaking go do it for someone else. So I feel that strongly about it. So are you cool with just being clear, first of all, going, I want a cleaning business, but the actions I've taken so far have got me a cleaning job. I'm just going to fix my actions to line up with what I want. Questions, comments, or remarks about around that? No, I, I feel like that makes total, total sense. It's the most frustrating coaching. And I've been on the receiving end of this is when you feel really confused and then someone says something, it's like inherently obvious. And you're like, well, once you say it, it's so obviously that's the truth. It wasn't even smart. How did I not get that? I don't know. It just experienced. So I've, I've been there. I've, I've seen other people say things that were obvious that I completely missed and just be like, well, now I feel stupid, which is super frustrating, but much less frustrating to hear early on than to hear it 20 years in. So you're still good to go, sister, only having, I hate to say wasted, that sounds so judgmental, but invested, spent, however you want to call it, six months cleaning. We can fix that now as opposed to five years in. Um, okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is a little trickier, um, a little less, that makes obvious sense, um, but equally important. Who you pick as your client, believe it or not, has everything to do with your ability to scale. So for a Grow My Cleaning Company, we won't even accept a client who's only wants to do move in, move out, construction, cleanup, one-time cleans. Um, if they do those exclusively now, but they want to start doing recurring services, we can help them. But if they're like, we'll pay whatever you want, whatever your coaching is, we don't care. We'll pay the whole thing. But we want you to coach us exclusively on cleaning toilets, right? I only clean, like you said, I've only got five or seven houses a week. I'd like 20 houses a week, but I want to clean them all. That's okay. We're not going to work with you because we just don't think we can help you be ultimately successful. If you said, I want to clean, I want to hire, or I don't want to clean, I want to hire, I want to do everything, but I only want to get move in, move outs, um, construction cleanup, any sort of one-time service, and I'm not willing to do any recurring service, probably wouldn't take you as a client just because we know ultimately you're not going to succeed. So there's a lot of reasons for that I can get into. But I want to, and I'll, I'll hit those really quickly on the tactical side, but then I want to talk about the beliefs that are really going to screw you up. Well, just like we talked about at the beginning, the beliefs are the big thing. That's that's the hardest part, right? So there's dumb stuff like the frustrations that you have with move in, move out or construction one-time cleans is they do this up and down, up and down. We need 17 cleans this week and we need two and a half next week. We hate that. Good. Try and hire somebody. Oh, I don't have any work for you today. Never mind. See ya. Just starve. Oh, I don't have any work for you tomorrow. See you. Oh, I don't have any work the next day. Oh shit, you gotta be here for 12 hours because you need to come now. You're not gonna be able to hire cal high caliber people to do that. You won't be able to scale. Um, even if you do scale, you're gonna have to be there all the time. It's very hard to systematize because you're constantly selling and repeating. And sometimes it's a three hour clean. Sometimes it's a seven hour clean. You walk in and there's like, you know, a bomb went off. So it's, it's, you can't scale. And then your revenue does the same. Sometimes you have this. $20,000 a month with construction cleanup, you might have $80,000 a month and then a $7,000 a month. 
Try running a freaking business like that. It's, it's not possible to scale, I promise you. And it's not profitable. Like It's not like it's wildly profitable because all the new people that don't know what they're doing take that garbage job and they don't know how to price either. So now you have to compete with a bunch of new people that don't know what they're doing. So you can't make any money. You can't scale. It's the worst. So that's the logical part. Let's talk about the mindset part, which is, uh, which is what's really going to hurt you. This belief of if someone, I'm just new, I have to take anyone that'll, that'll take me. If they'll wave money. I got to take it. That's how you start a business. Is, that's how you start a poor business. <laughs> so it's really important to get, just like we got clear at the beginning on, do I have a cleaning job or am I in the cleaning, do I have a cleaning business? And right now you're like, all right, let's be honest. I got a cleaning job. Okay. No judgment. And for those of you out there that are like five, 10, 15, 20 years, here's the magic. If you can take charge of your beliefs, which you can, it doesn't matter. You're still two or three months away. So you might go, oh, I wish I was Shantice. You know, she's only six months in. It's easy for her to switch. I've been doing this for 20 years. All the only thing different between Shanti's and you is you've been you get 20 years of beliefs telling you I have to clean toilets to make money. Shanti's only has six months. That's it. That's the whole thing. So it's still the stories that you tell. I don't want anyone out there that's been doing this 10, 20 years cleaning to go, oh, because I've been cleaning for so long, it'll take me longer to switch. Nope. Just it might take you longer to change your mind, but it won't take you any longer to change your business. So that's the first piece. Second piece is we got to get crystal clear on the clients that we want. And oftentimes what happens is we have a friend, we have an in, right? That's my least favorite. I've got a friend that's going to buy half my business. And I wasn't thinking about selling my business because his friend's got a bunch of money. I'll sell it. And it always goes to shit. Or I have a friend that would be a good partner. And I wasn't thinking about taking a partner, but because this friend's this perfect partner, I'm going to take it. I have a friend that's a realtor. So I wasn't thinking about doing move in, move outs, but they can give me 20 move in, move outs a month. So that's what we're going to do. I have a friend that owns it. So we, we bend our business, our whole business model, our whole lives around this one relationship without really ever asking questions on is this a good, I have a friend that's a drug dealer and I can get free drugs. So I'm going to start cooking or heroin. Like, well, that may not be, it's like, well, that's stupid, but we have a friend that's going to move in, move out, which to me is business heroin. And we're like, but I have a friend, right? Heroin's free. You want some heroin shunties? All you want free till you die, which won't be, which won't be long. Right. Would you go, well, I mean, if I have to pay for it, I want, but it's free heroin. I mean, who's going to pass that up? Like, what are you talking about? So even if you have terrible, terrible clients, but they're free, right? You just wandered into them. They're still a terrible client. So it's hard to change our mindset around somebody's waving money at me. I have to take it. I have to take it. All right. So there's all the factual stuff, which will help you leave this call. Shanti's going, I am smarter than I was before, but we haven't addressed the emotional stuff that'll that might sound like, and I'm going to let you tell me, but might sound like I'm scared. I'll go broke. She'll be mad at me. No one will ever feed me. I'm not good enough to hire people. All that. That's the crazy. We haven't talked about any of that scary stuff. So now that your brain is like, I got it. This is, I got to stop cleaning and I got to get better clients. I'm guessing your heart's still going. I don't know, dude, this I'm real scared out here. So <laughs> Talk to me about what your heart's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's correct. Speak heard- up. You're saying everything great. I want to hear, I want everybody to hear. Um, it's it's also the support on the emotional side of the cleaning business, you know, like I don't really have that such much support within my family around me. But like um, and I feel like also social media now, like it's hard to, you know, promote your business business with so many different apps like, you know. Um, yeah, I feel like that's the emotional downside for me. So let's talk about that because those are both things that many of the audience are going to have a version of, right? Not all of you are going to have the exact same thing, but some version of, I don't have support of people around me, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's social media or the news or whatever. I don't have anyone that gets me and wants to help me. That's a real problem. And I'm glad that you said that, Shantis, because a lot of people downplay that. Oh, it's no big deal. It's like, oh, it's a big deal. And then, um, so thank you. We'll talk about that. The second thing you said, and then we'll, we'll wrap it is overwhelm. Like there's a thousand and one. Oh, wait, by the end of the sentence, there's a thousand and three. Oh, geez. Now there's a thousand and seven like social media platforms I could be on. So let's talk about each of them separately. So without being too self-serving. So what we do here at Cleaning Nation, and there's lots of free content. So I'd encourage you to do that. We have a 15,000 member Facebook group. Obviously, there's this podcast. If you're listening to, if you're listening to the YouTube channel, you subscribe to the podcast. If you're watching this on the podcast, feel free to check out the YouTube. They're the same content. It's just different ways to absorb them. Uh, all these turn, are turned into blogs. If you'd like to read, like I said, there's a Facebook group. All the content that you need for free to grow your company is growing cleaningcompany.com. However, a lot of people 
they're like, I still need a family. I still need a community. And we can kind of do that with a large 15,000 member Facebook group, but it's not intimate. You can get overwhelmed. So our clients, obviously we create a community and solve that problem. Um, so feel free to reach out to us if you need help on that end. If you're like, I'm not paying you big jump, fine, don't do that. But you still need a, you still need a community. So I would encourage you, uh, Shantice and Cleaning Nation to find your community. And again, Cleaning Nation is so big, it's hard to have that be a real community with like, hey, we've got 100,000 listeners, go be friends. You're like, I, what, what does that even mean? Like, might as well, I have 100,000 people in my city. I might as well just talk to my neighbor, right? Yeah. <laughs> So I guess the big thing I would encourage you on is find a community. If it's being a client of ours, great. If it's finding someone else and being a client of them, great. But it is important to have a community of people that understand you. Um, again, we offer one, but if you're like, I don't want to pay for that one, then that doesn't mean you don't need it, right? Don't be like, I'm not paying for your crap. Okay, but you still need a community. Find one that works for you, even if you have to create it, right? Um, when, it, when that family is, when that community is your family, um, that's, that's probably something deeper that we're going to have to talk about here on the podcast, but you definitely want to, it is far better. You can be successful without the success, without the support of your family. It's far, far better to get the support of your family um, and kind of get them in on the vision. And not, I'm not trying to short, short shift you here, but we just don't have time. That's a big concept I want to get. So the big thing I would encourage all of you, including Shantice, is find a, find a community, create a community, pay for a community, whatever you need to do. Having other people that know what they're talking about, love and support you is a really big deal, right? Don't, shut that down and go, I don't, I should just be able to figure it out. You big dummy. You know, I'm too dumb. I can't, we judge ourselves. Like I should be able to I'd be Superman. Maybe, I don't know, but you're not. And no, nor am I, right? We're actually humans that need other humans to support us. Freaking just lean into it. Yeah. Don't, don't beat yourself up for needing community. That's a really, that's a big deal, but most people won't verbalize like you did Shanti. So great job on that. Uh, the second piece is on the marketing. That's a skill set. So I tell folks that come into our program, we just help you make better mistakes than the big dumb mistakes I made. And one of the only things worse than not enough information is too much information, right? I'm guessing everything we teach is out there on the Googles, right? If you got if you got 17 lifetimes, you can figure all that crap out. Problems once you figure this out, it'll take you 17 lifetimes. It's all new stuff again. So the way to overcome this is to work by principles, not by media. So it's easy to be like, oh, I heard TikTok's big. I'm going to check that out. Oh, I heard Google's big. I heard Facebook ads are big. I heard this, whatever thing that we think is the thing. And we chase that. You can do that till the end of time. And there's, I promise you, there's TikTok salesmen, Google salesmen, Facebook salesmen that will take your money. <laughs> and be like, absolutely, let's do this. So if you're following media and chasing the new thing, you're going to struggle. Um, too much, again, for this podcast, but I kind of give you the idea. You want to really get clear on who your customer is and serve them. So for me, we've done this podcast for I don't know, five, six, seven years. We're in 700 episodes. We're not on TikTok. We're not on a lot of stuff. And how do I make my decision? I figure out where you guys are. Like we, I tried LinkedIn. I thought, oh, because you're business people. They'll be on LinkedIn. Guess what? You're on LinkedIn, but you only check it once a week and you don't really care. That's not the community that you want to be in. Podcast listeners are like, holy crap, I've listened to every podcast or hundreds of them. I mean, that's crazy to me, but that's what they do. So we know who you are. We know what your pain is and we know where you're going to solve your pain. And we tested a couple of things. So, and the cool thing is, say we're on pod, you know, YouTube, podcast, blog, we have a website and Instagram, and there might be and an email list, six things, which is a lot. We're, that's, we're kind of an information company, so you don't need that many. Six out of 10,000. Yeah, guess what? I think about the other 99,900, I don't care. <laughs> as long as I can serve you guys to the level I want to serve with the media that I'm on, it's all good. So don't worry about should I do this? Should I do maybe? I don't know. If you had unlimited time and money, I'd do them all. <laughs> but since right. none of us had unlimited either, we just got to pick the one or two. And one's too little. Like, you know, you could, you know, be really good at Facebook ads and crush it until Facebook shuts you off or something goes wonky. You can be really good with door knocking or telemarketing until they change the laws about that. We we could be really good at text marketing, direct message. There's a thousand ways to be good. So one's too few. If um I don't want you to underwhelm yourself. Like, I'm going to do one thing until it works. That's great. And maybe you get away, not get away with it. Maybe that's effective for a couple of years, but at some point it won't work no more. Um, six, I just may think of as kind of our main thing, more than enough. Three or four, two or three at a minimum, three or four at the most, not that big of a deal. And the cool thing is just try a couple. And I'll, I'll give you the, the hint and then we'll kind of close it up. I'll let Shanti say anything she wants to say that we'll close it up. It's much more about the messaging than about the media. So Obviously, if I'm putting my ad on a Super Bowl and I have to pay for all million, you know, millions of listeners, but only like 73 of you guys own cleaning companies or however many, that's not a great media, so it's not going to work. But 
if I was on a podcast like this podcast and we don't take sponsors, but if I could find a podcast that's as big as our podcast and they, they take money and I could do a message, they might only have 10,000 listeners or 20,000 listeners or whatever it is. But if almost all of them are owners of cleaning companies, holy crap, that's a great market. So the media, it just, are your people there or not? That's all. And the reason Facebook works is there's so many freaking people on there. Your people are there. I promise you. Um, but if you have a bad message, it's not going to work anymore. Right. If I could talk directly to all my people, like Chantice, and all I said was, give me money and I'll coach you. That's my message. <laughs> it might be the best media ever, and I'm going to get zero people to help me or to, for, to help them. Um, but if I have a perfect message and I take it to an iffy media, you know, I'm, it's still going to be effective. So as long as the people are at the media you're using, it'll work. If you don't use the right messaging, you don't talk about their pain, it's not going to work no matter where you put it. And if you do talk about their pain, it'll work anywhere you put it as long as some of your people are there to respond. There's enough of them there to respond. So take it out, take the pressure off yourself, Sean Tiefel. I got to be an expert in all these new media forms to be like, I just got to get good at two or three. And maybe my clients, my perfect prospects go to 10 and I only am in three. That's okay. You can, as long as you're like, holy crap, I'm getting more customers I can handle with just two, two social media outlets. And I'm missing eight. Say so there's eight that would be perfect. Yeah, but you have all the work that you can handle. What the heck's the matter? Don't don't beat yourself up. All right. We covered way too much and probably didn't go as deep as we should have. But um, man, I really appreciate you showing up and being honest. Any other questions, comments, or rude remarks, Shantis, before we go? No. That you made it easy. <laughs> all right. Um, for those of you that missed, I got to talk to her a little bit before the call, and I'm going to talk to her a little after. She's delightful. So you talk too little. I screwed up and talked way too much. We might have to do another podcast. We just have shot and tea talk because you're delightful. All right. Um, Growing Clean, Clean Nation, if this is kind of scratch your itch and you want more, uh, either community or um, availability on how to do marketing. Like I said, we've done 700 podcasts. I've written two books on Amazon. GrowingCleaningCompany.com has everything you need. You can also... Um, I would start with the free on-demand training on the homepage. It is the five shifts you need to make, probably the most powerful piece of content we've done in seven years. Check it out now. I will see you there. Well, here we are at the end of the podcast and you made it. Great job. Uh, I've got a little bonus for you before for sticking through with me. But like I mentioned before, if you got value out of this podcast and you want to show a little love, subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Spotify, wherever the heck you're listening to this thing. Share with a friend. Share the love. And as a special thank you for those of you that stuck with me to the end, how about I give you my personal phone number so we can text? It's a great way for me to get to know you, your business, your goals personally. So shoot me a text now, 602-932-6431. 602-932-6431. I am the only one who responds to these texts and I will personally respond to everyone I possibly can as long as uh, this number is manned. I uh, don't know how long we're going to keep this at the end of the podcast, so grab it now. 602-932-6431. Give me a text. Say hey. Can't wait to meet you.